Oh, I am not going to have enough space. <laughs> oh, no. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Room and Board. And you know what? Room and Board's going on the road. I'm leaving. I'm out of here for three months. Uh, I'm heading to Nova Scotia. For those of you who don't know, uh, I'm an actor, and so I'm heading to Nova Scotia, Halifax, for a theater contract. I'm going to be working at Shakespeare by the Sea. If you happen to be in the Nova Scotia, Halifax area, hey, come on down. We're doing Pinocchio and Romeo and Juliet. But the most important thing as I pack up to leave and to hit the road is not filming a bunch of videos so that I, I can travel. No, it is deciding what games to bring. And so this is what this video is going to be about. Picking games to go away for three months with. Now here are my stipulations. I have this bag. It's my board game tables bag. I also have this Costco bag. And this is it. This is the amount of space. Oh no, is this it? Uh, this is it. This is it. This is the confined amount of space. And you can ignore that I have a, you know, a secret a secret um, backup bag in case I run out of this space. This is it. Yeah, I'm gonna need the secret backup bag. <laughs> These are the two things that I can fill with games. That is the amount of space that we're gonna have in the car because we gotta pack a bunch of stuff. We gotta pack Artie, making room for him. So, th so this, these are the stipulations. Here's the consideration for this video. I have limited space, right? Prioritizing the things to bring. The things to bring need to fall into certain categories. Number one, games that Renee will play with me. That's important. Least important, I think. <laughs> she, uh, she's out. She's not gonna watch this anyway, uh, unless Artie's in it. That's the other time she watches the videos. Least important, what Renee will, will play with me. Because, well, she never wants to play anything that I have to review anyway. And she knows games. I want to introduce games to more people. Second important is Renee's family playing some potential games with them, but they already own some games. They have Azul, they have Sheriff, they have Quirkle. That's the sort of range in which they like to play. They play a lot of cribbage, right? They love Azul. So having games for her, for her family, for those sorts of gatherings, that is important. The main thing that is the most important is indoctrinating as many members of my cast into the board gaming hobby as possible. I'll see who takes to board games, who doesn't. So with that in mind, I want to have a range of games that have larger player counts, potentially, and also games that are still fun and games that get people excited. In addition, something else that I'm considering for this contract, which I haven't had to consider before, is that the majority of our rehearsals are going to take place outside. So because it's outside, you need to factor that in, you need to factor the wind in there. And so I want to focus on games that I could potentially play outside as well. Now, I'm going to have, I have friends out there. I have friends who I've played games with before. In fact, one of the people who I'm seeing, Drew, he introduced me to Catan, which started me off on this board gaming journey. It is very exciting to go back and play. And so I know, I know I'm going to have other members and we're, we can get together outside of just being in a park, right? We're going to get together for game nights at people's houses. So it doesn't all have to be park related, but those are the things that I'm contemplating when packing this bag. Okay, those are all the stipulations out of the way. Let's get started with, I said it was the least important, but I'm putting in any game that she wants. Renee's picks are going in first. Let's start filling the bag. Renee pick number one, her best pick. It aligns with my sensibilities. Everdell. Everdell's fantastic. I know Renee and I will play this together. I know I can get people interested because of the theme. This was one, this is on the longer side. It didn't get played when I was in Southampton. It was one of the ones that I brought and didn't end up getting played when I was at the Southampton contract last summer. But I have faith, oh, well, because Renee's gonna be there with me. I know this will get played. I love Everdell so much. It's my number three game of all time. Easy decision going in the bag. Do you see? Do you see the space? That's what space we've got. I'll keep, there we go. That's in frame up there. Everdell's number one, easy. The next game that Renee wanted me to bring, <clears throat> and that I probably would bring as well, Tiny Towns. Uh, I think Tiny Towns is a good fit for a lot of reasons. Tiny Towns plays up to six players. So with a larger cast, and this is a larger cast, there's like probably 10 or 12 people in the cast because it's in the park, larger shows, right? So having something that plays up to six, 
that also plays pretty quickly uh, and is fairly accessible is good tiny towns on your turn you call out a, a color and then you put that color in your little grid right this little grid right here and then you form patterns to make shapes it, it's really accessible plays in 30 minutes doesn't out overstay its welcome if you have people who aren't so sure about committing the, you know the two hours for everdell tiny towns might get them on board happy putting this in the one question for tiny towns is can we shrink it into not this box where are my lids all right so tiny towns could be stuck into another box you can see i've taken out the insert because it's trash and i've just added in these own little containers for myself but i think potentially the better thing to do with tiny towns is to use all this extra space in the box which is significant right it's a decent amount of space probably half the box close to it so let's get some sneaky little choices into this box what should we put in here? What shall I put in here? What shall I put in here? Okay, we've got all this space. I'm fairly certain we're gonna put Mind Bug in here. Now, Mind Bug, I need to take the actual package because um, this is one that I have to review. They sent it to me for review. It's a quick two player card game. Oh, beautiful Mind Bug. That fits nicely in there. See? I'm very happy. I'm very happy right now. Unless it's cut, unless, unless Letter Jam can fit in here, which I think it might be able to. Letter Jam is another one that Renee wanted me to bring. Fantastic game. One of my favorite word games. Uh, it's so good. Like, so slick, cooperative. Might do well for outside because the poker chips are heavy. Probably not, though, because you're laying cards face down and they're all going to blow away. Never mind, take it back. Completely horrible for outside. However, really good game. And I think it's going to be Letter Jam. Yes! Oh, that's a good, that's a good box size. Can't really fit anything else here, but that's okay. Unless, unless we get really really wild here I think we might be able to get really wild yes <laughs> pack one of Dutch Blitz in this beautiful beautiful tiny town surprise I can fit Whoa! that's why you don't try to balance things with a camera <laughs> boom letter jam and Dutch Blitz in tiny towns Let's go. That makes me feel so much better about taking Tiny Towns, I'll tell ya. Cause I was like, eh, I'm not like the biggest fan of Tiny Towns, but if it's got letter, letter Jam and Dutch Blitz inside of it, oh, you just elevated it by the extreme. Next thing that I think's gotta go in, Mind Bug can, can go in a slippery slide somewhere. And this might be a real controversial pick because the space alone, I should probably leave it but I can't go three months. I, I, can't, I can't go three months without my beautiful Rising Sun, especially because a lot of the reasons I like Rising Sun is I think because I, I like negotiation and talking, and so does Drew, and that's why he likes Catan and introduced me to Catan. And so I just really wanna play this with him and introduce it to him and introduce this one to some of my friends out there who I know are ready for this level of gaming. Uh, I have specific people who I feel will I will play this with and I'm really excited to introduce it to them and I, because I've made a bomb insert basically everything I need is in this one box I don't need any of the expansion stuff I'll miss out on the monsters but who cares you know this is absolutely going in and it needs to go in now so that I can see the space I can see what we're working with you can see that it is it's a chunky game but that's just uh, that's just how it has to be there's a couple other chunky games that I do need to bring as well. So continually thinking about box shape. Next one is one that I have, oh, there's two. Ugh. Well, I gotta do it. And this is my own fault because I haven't reviewed these yet. And I took a copy promising that I would review them and I will, oh, friggin' tiny hammer. Uh, I will review them and honor that sort of commitment. I feel like there's a lot, I saw, a video the other day of people being like, oh, I got these, I was supposed to review them, and I didn't, now they're going, and I'm like, I get it. I get people are busy, I get you're busy, but for me, I don't wanna be that person who I bite off more than I can chew consistently, 
and I think it would be a disservice and I, I just feel bad if I don't review everything that I specifically say yes to reviewing. Sometimes I'll now get sent things which I don't say yes to reviewing, and so I feel no obligation to review them. I'll talk about them eventually in some other capacity, but if I say, hey, I will do a review for you on this if you send it to me, then I feel obligated to do so. So one of those things is uh, Skull Canyon Ski Fest, which is actually kind of fun, and I actually think it might be a good fit for some, some people because it's like Ticket to Ride. So I'm happy bringing this one. I already know what I'm gonna say about this one. It's not like more plays is gonna make it change for me. But I think this is a really solid gateway game. Here's your spoiler for the review. I think it's a solid gateway game. It's gonna get the seal of approval, right? It's not gonna get seal of distinction, but seal of approval. And it's Ticket to Ride meets a little element of Takedo and Parks at the bottom. It's fine. I think it's got a lot of accessibility, so happy to put it into potentially as my gateway choice, right? Where I would bring something like Ticket to Ride. Uh, I'm not going to. And then another thing that I will review and Honestly, it might actually be a good group for it as well. This is a game called Labyrinth Paths of Destiny that I said yes to and I got like a year ago. And I, I wish I didn't have to be taking space in my bag for something that I do not know if it will be good or not. But the pitch was that it's like a dungeon crawling uh, game that's the same weight as Catan, right? And so the fact that I'm going to see my friend who introduced me to Catan and still enjoys Catan, Maybe this will will get some play. I just, I th it's it's fifty fifty on if this is good or not. But I promised a review, so it's got to go in the bag. And that's the, the this hurts. But let's get these out of the way, so that we know we know what we're working with. Okay, we got a little bit of space here. Let's flatten that tiny towns a bit more. Yeah, this that feels bad to include. So let's put something that we love in there. No, let's put something that we will fit in there. Let's see if this fits. Wavelength is my next choice. Uh, Wavelength is, I think, the better version of Codenames. Wavelength is such a good party game, and it's one that always has hit with groups of non-gamers looking for an activity. So because of that, it goes into the bag. I'm worried about this selection right now. I'm really worried about this selection. But Wavelength is, is sort of an auto-include because every time I brought it to a contract, especially when there's a larger cast, it does well. So Wavelength is for sure something that needs to go in, and I think it'll fit. It does, just barely. There's a little sleeve right here. You know what, let's rotate these around. Push these. There's a bit of, there's a pocket, there's pockets of space that I can still fill. So maybe I'll fill it with another thing of Dutch Blitz. So we can play eight player Dutch Blitz. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Seems like that worked. Can Mind Bug fit? Let's see. I, I don't think so. Oh, maybe along the side. Boom. That's how you fill the space. Testing to see that it'll close. It will. Okay, we're still good. Let's slot some more in there. What'd you just call me? You heard what I said. Coup is an absolute auto-include as well. Coup is one of the best lunchtime games. There was a contract that I was on in which we played this every lunch. Every lunch, yeah, fixed it. I know, I heard you in the comments, okay? I fixed it. Um, we played it every single lunch for three months straight. And uh, yeah, it's just awesome, very quick. It's probably bad to play outside, but I think because the rounds are so quick, you can get away with it. That's going in. Maybe there, no, probably here. On top of Dutch Blitz. Yeah, that makes sense, fit there. This, we can see if it fits. Um, broken and Beautiful, I wanna get a few more plays of this in. I backed this on Kickstarter, I thought it was cool. Set collection, very similar to Sushi Go. I was a good price on Kickstarter, and I like to put my money where my obnoxious mouth is, so this one got included as well. A bunch of little games. That's how you, that's how you maximize your feeling of a, of a board game bag. I don't know if this will fit, though. Kind of? Yeah! Oh yeah, perfect! Another one that's good that actually might be good for outside because of the tiles, the weight to them, is One Night Werewolf. I have the One Night and One Night Daybreak in here. Very easy to play. I think that can fit right here on top. I think that'll be okay. Oh, we're pushing it. Ooh. 
We're pushing it. I think it fits. I think it fits. Honestly, it might fit better here because I think we have a little bit of wiggle room there. That's probably a better spot to do it. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather expand it in that direction just to, for the for the structure of the bag. I think that's bag number one. On to bag two. Renee's here. I'm showing her what I put in. Can I hear my cereal? You can hear cereal. Uh, I got Tiny Towns. Yeah. The box of Tiny Towns. But in inside Tiny Towns, you can fit Letter Jam and Dutch Blitz. Oh, God. So basically, you pack ratted three games in one box? Yeah, you bet. You bet. Then we have Everdell. Then we have Rising Sun, because you and I are going to play it with Drew and Jade. Oh, my God. We're, we have to bring it. I can't go three months without Rising Sun. Yes, you can. You do all the time. Have that stricken from the record. I bet you've gone three this past three months. No, I played it on my birthday. Oh, it's that been, was February. It's been three months since my birthday, yeah. Jesus Christ. That was the last time I played it. You can't put that in. Um, why? Because you can't show people your birthday. Why? Hackers. That's true. Next, this is one that you've never heard of. Labyrinth, Paths of Destiny. This is one that I accepted for review. And I don't know if I'm excited about, but it could be Catan. They pitched it to me as like similar weight as Catan, but dungeon crawling. So I think maybe Drew could like it. I was going to say, we didn't even play that one. <laughs> somebody, somebody. It's or, quite, quite the pitch. It is quite the pitch. I know. Well, I got to read through it again because I really haven't played it. Skull Canyon Ski Fest, Ticket to Ride, basically, um, with but on a ski slope. So I feel like that might be good. Wavelength, One Night Werewolf, slipped in here, then okay. then slipped in here is Coup and the other Dutch Blitz, and then uh, Mind, Mind Bug, which I have to have to play. So what? how many is that? One, oh, and Broken and Beautiful. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I love that you have this vision for like, all these games you're gonna play in Nova Scotia. I think everyone should ask you to report back at the end when you unpack this box and tell them how many yeah. you play. Usually, well, like, I'm usually pretty good at getting them to the table. When I don't have somebody weighing me down. On to bag two. So these are the B-listers. These aren't the B-listers. These are the different shapes. Shape number one, Endless Winter. I feel some sort of review obligation towards Endless Winter because a lovely patron bought it for me. And I am so grateful and I really liked it, but I've only played it. I haven't played it enough and I want to do a review on it. The production quality in this is so good. It's work replacement, but it's also deck building. But it's also a bit of air control. But it's also something else. You may not like it, because you didn't like Dwellings of Elder Vale. I like this significantly better than Dwellings of Elder Vale, though. I don't like potlucks. You don't like potlucks? Decide who you are. Yeah, that's fair. That's what I think. Have uh, I played this? No, you haven't. I will play it with you. But you're gonna. Oh, you're gonna. So Endless Winter goes in here, and the fact that it can stand straight up that's uh, something I I wasn't expecting. I thought I'd have to go lengthwise. Now here's another target for something that I want to bring. I want to bring Rococo because, well, Renee likes it. And also, Honestly. yeah, and also it's real fun and I want to play more of it. And I think if I can, well, one, one other thing that I want to do is show off the uniqueness of possible themes that can exist in board games, right? So like when talking to, to people about it, you can say, oh, there's this nature one, and there's this winter one, and now there's this dress building one. I Number one thing we have to pack. <laughs> Hi, buddy. <laughs> now I can't fill it. <laughs> You're so cute. Rococo or Artie? Sorry, Artie, you're cut. But he fits so nice. Yeah, looking at the people. <laughs> so I thought I would need to have Rococo on the side, like this, which still might happen. It fits, the height is correct, it does fit, but I think we can get away with it standing up like that. And I think that will mean we can fit more things. Okay, so I think we can fit those. I'm excited about that. Now I want to move to things that I think would be good outside. These three are the, are the competitors are contemplating to be outside. Carcassonne, 
only has the tiles and the meeples. It's not going to blow away. It's gateway. It's accessible. Drew might own a copy, though, which maybe it gets cut. I don't think he does. I think he's played it before. I'm just thinking for the park, right? It also fits in in a decent lunch period of time. This I think you could play outside. Key Flower, I also think you could play outside because it only has the tiles. And the Meep oh no, it's got the screens. It's got the screens and hidden information because that might blow away. So that may not be good for outside either. Acropolis, I think is good for outside because it's King Domino. You just have the chunky pieces and you only have the stones. The only cards that you would have would be your cheat sheets. And that's easy to either remember or not. I think Acropolis does get, get a spot. It's easy, it's accessible, it's another potential lunchtime game. Uh, into the box with you. Here's some other ones on the box, on the docket. Avalon, obviously, has to be there. No question, going in. Avalon for sure is going in. I'm leaving it because it's clearly gonna go on the side. Um, Chronicles of Crime, Renee and her mom were playing through this. They were enjoying it, so we're bringing it for them. Yeah, they got 30% correct, so they've got some work to do. It was like 2 p.m. on the first day, and my mom was like, Oh, I know who did it. Let's go. Stop the mystery. <laughs> you, have to, you have to ask people for clues. Um, this one is also pretty locked into bringing Renee's parents. Like I said, they love the first Azul, so we'll see if they like the second Azul to see the difference. This is going in the bag for sure. Unless you want to get me Azul three and four, and then you can get it home. <laughs> we could steal Yvonne Kara's Chronicles of Crime. Looks like it can fit there. Renee requested psychic pizza delivers go to a ghost town, so we'll take that. That'll probably fit up top here. It's just a good time. It's just a good time. Oh, another one that I got recently, I got this at Binge Bins, which is like crazy bins. It's the Amazon liquidation warehouse place. I got it for six bucks. It was completely open. All of the coasters were spread around this bin, but luckily I'd been looking for a copy of this game and I knew what the game was and I knew what the component count was. So I found it all, no rule book. And also the reason why it was sent back is that, that it was actually a misprint because in Skull, the premise of Skull is that you have, whoop, you have. You tell them how much you paid though. Before. I paid six bucks. I said. Oh. Yeah. Uh, the premise of Skull is that you have uh, four coasters. You have four coasters here. Three of them have flowers on them, and one has a skull. Everybody's going to put a coaster face down in front of them, and then on your turn, you can either put a coaster on your coaster, making a stack of two coasters, or you can say a number, and that's how many coasters you think you can flip up without revealing a skull, but you have to start with your own. So even if I've, if I've played my skull down and I say a number, I say two. I'm hoping desperately that somebody says three so that I don't have to flip over my thing and they'll flip over mine and lose one of their coasters. Uh, the first person to get two things correctly wins. It's a heck of a time, but this version came with only three blue ones and five green ones. So it technically can play to five people. Probably will take some like contact paper and uh, contact paper this stuff because we have an extra flower and we're missing a flower. So like if these, if the backs of these all look the same, then we could have like a custom set and, and play up to six. This one I think is absolutely gonna hit outside. It's so simple. I think this one is gonna be like the... You might as well leave all the other summer because all you're gonna do is play Skull. I know, I think this one could be a good pick of the summer. Um, that one's for sure going in somewhere. Avalon's gotta go in. Let's put Avalon in there. Okay, so we're getting, a, we're getting a decent amount in here and now I'm gonna put in games. I've gotten all of my commitments done. And now I can finally put in a few games that I like. <laughs> no, Rococo and Endless Winter are ones that, that I put in, but I gotta, I gotta have a little think about which ones I would really like to play this summer and then put those into my secret special bag. <laughs> what? Christopher. <laughs> that Christopher. I'm definitely gonna be using. <laughs> you can. We already needs room for Stretch's leg. Nah. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. It can be on the in the back. This is the bag that can be at the back. Christopher. Oh yeah, this is what I want to put in. Raw is a definite inclusion. I've been having so much fun with Raw and I think it's so great, easily accessible. Also would be good for outside. I meant to pull this off the shelf. This is for sure in. Oh yeah, Renee wants six nymphed, but I don't have that yet. 
Okay. I'm putting in key flour. You only get one, key flour or carcassonne. Fine, carcassonne stays because we might have access to it. So this is bag bag number two. We got endless winter rococo Avalon skull, uh, psychic pizza delivers. Jeez. Uh, Acropolis, Azul, Chronicles of Crime, Raw, and Keyflower. Feels like a lot of games. <laughs> yeah, you should check yourself before you wreck yourself. But I, I want a couple more. <laughs> well, there are three more <laughs> that I could put into that separate bag. I don't know. I'm going to decide on it. Maybe I'll bring these. Um, I'm contemplating Dune Imperium. Honestly, the four player count is making me stop on this one, but because of that sort of get to 10. I don't know, I just feel like Dune Imperium, I've been enjoying it more and more every time I play it. And it, it gets that sort of mid, mid weight. And, and I feel like that's what I'm missing from the selection is like a few really solid mid weight ones. And so if I were to throw in Dune, uh, if I were to throw in Wingspan, because that's one that people have potentially heard of, and it is a good mid-weight option as well. That's something I'm considering. And then the last one that I'm considering is because I just want to play it, is Beast uh, by Studio Midhall. I just, I just think this one looks really fun, and I want to play it, but I know that I've also already agreed to do a review on City of Gears, which I also thought looked cool, and so I think they're sending it to Halifax and because that's a hidden movement and this is a hidden movement it may be difficult to get both to the table so beast ah I really want to bring it but I'll play it when I get back just bring it Renee's uh Renee's off camera telling me to bring it because I got sad and that I wasn't bringing things <laughs> and I got sad that she was telling me to stop bringing things, so now she's encouraging me. I just don't know if it'll get played. These are the three that, like, I want to bring and don't really have the space for out of those two bags, but I think would be nice additions. Other, another one that got cut that I really wanted to bring, but you know what? You're not getting brought because you're too big. Uh, Anachrony. This is one that I love that Renee hasn't played yet that I just think would be so fun to play and to introduce her to, but she'll she'll play it eventually. Scythe also got cut for that reason. Holotype was on the docket, uh, but I think I've just been playing a lot of it recently. I just played it again uh, two days ago. For work replacement, I guess I have Endless Winter. Oh, and Everdell, I've got Everdell, okay. And honestly, I was rethinking my whole Keyflower choice and maybe that should be replaced with Puerto Rico because Puerto Rico was my sort of next step game from Catan and and I know that's the that's the potential of who I'm working with. So because I have a hidden movement game that I have review obligations to do, I gotta put Beast back on the shelf, but I'm really excited to try it when I get a chance. Wingspan I'm bringing because of the potential familiarity with the title or because people may have heard of it. But people may have heard of it, chances are you can find a copy also for like that engine building aspect. Do I have something that's a better engine builder? I mean, Endless Winter kind of covers that. Rococo honestly covers that a bit. So Wingspan's going back on the shelf. Dune Imperium, I want to bring. So maybe I'll put it in my backpack. <laughs> I just feel like this is a potentially good medium weight. It covers that sci-fi theme, which we don't have in the selection, uh, which is pretty good. Shows a potential IP c connection. Yeah, so I think I think Dune Imperium is gonna be my pick for like stick it in the backpack. I think I'm gonna, oh, you know what? There, fits. <laughs> if it sits, it fits. It's, it's the same height as Rococo. So I'm gonna call this <laughs> as, uh, as a bag. Yeah, I think that's fair. Fits right on top. Boom, might slide out. It even, it even has a little, hits a little lip here. Well, hits it on the other side. You'll have to trust me. Yeah, so anyway, those are, that's my selection, I think. That's my selection, at least for this video, until I look at it 
you know, tonight and completely change my mind and add new things. But I think that's that's where we're going to call it. Uh, let me know what you would have brought, what mistakes I made. Games to play outdoors is a tough one. And we'll see. I'll, I'll see who I end up playing games with over the course of the contract. And we'll get them on the channel to share their thoughts as well. I'm leaving out Splendor, which was the big hit. It could fit into a box, but I don't think I'm bringing it because I want to play other things. And it was such a big hit that it's all we ended up playing. So you cut, Splendor. No one will know the enjoyment of you. And that's the way I like it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Uh, hopefully that was entertaining. And I, like, I'm so stressed. Yeah, you're like staring off existentially <sighs> into the five minutes in between every sentence. Yeah, I'm so stressed that I'm making the wrong choices here. So please validate me. Thank you. Uh, my name is Chris George. I don't have a catchphrase, but I, I'm probably gonna have to redo this video as I, you don't have a ride in Nova Scotia, as, as I change, uh, change it all up when the cameras go off. But I appreciate you being here, and it's true. I can always just buy more games in Nova Scotia. <laughs> Boardroom Game Cafe. Foster the Meeple shouts it out a bunch. I agree. Definitely are gonna have some collaborations with Fossil Meeple while we're there. Unless, of course, the forest fires burn it all, every game to the ground, which is a real possibility. It's a horrible time right now in Nova Scotia. So I am thinking of them and bringing them flammable goods and hopefully all will be okay. <laughs> See ya.